Hello, Geometry, and here we go with Law of Signs. Um, with the learning targets for today, I want you to determine when Law of Signs is appropriate to use, and I want you to be able to use Law of Signs to find missing angle measures and side lengths. So here we go. Um, in this triangle here, why were we not able to use trig to solve this problem, the trig that we've been doing? Well, it's not a right triangle, right? If it's not a right triangle, we couldn't do anything with this at, at this stage of what we know. However, today I'm going to show you a way to do this, and that is using the law of sines. Okay, this allows us to find all the missing pieces of this triangle. You can literally find all the missing pieces. All right. Good news is for law of sines, it works for any triangle, not just right triangles. Okay. And the law of sines is right there. Basically, it's saying that the, the side over the sine of the opposite angle of that side is equal all the way across the triangle. So I'll show you what that means here in a little bit. Another way you might see me do this, you might see sine A over A equals sine B over B, and which equals sine C over C. Um, it's just saying you can flip them and it's still equal. So yeah, I wanted to show you that. Uh, one thing I do want you to notice, side lengths are shown using lowercase letters. Big, that's a, actually a big detail. You will see it a lot. And angles are shown using uppercase letters or capital letters. Okay, um, get used to doing that. All right, so there's a proof here, not a proof like what we've done back in first semester, but I'm gonna kind of show you how this whole thing works. So um, change color to red here. I'm gonna draw in here an altitude which means it's got a right angle here. And I'm gonna call this the height because that is what this is. That's the height of the triangle, all right? Well, if I look at the triangle on the left, so that would be this triangle here, I have angle A, and I've got side B and side H. I don't have C, C got cut, um, and angle C got cut as well. On the other end, I've got this triangle with angle B. I've got H here and I've got A here. Again, I can't use C because it got cut and it got an angle C got cut as well. Um, but on this one, on both of these, I can write a um, trig function. So on the on the first triangle that I drew, I can say the sine of A equals H over B. And then if I solve that for H, like I've done many times in this unit so far, I have H equals B sine A. I'll hang on to that for a second. I'm gonna switch colors here. Let's do the other triangle. So this one, I have the sine of B equals H over A. Multiply by A, I get H equals A sine B. Well, these H's are the same in both of those equations. So in, if those H's are the same, what they're equal to has to be the same. So this and this are equal. So I'm going to rewrite this. B sine A equals A sine B. Okay. Watch what I do. I'm going to now divide both sides by sine of B and sine of A. I'm going to divide by both. And you'll see why here in a second. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, it's okay. On this side, the sine A cancels, and I'm left with B over sine B equals, and on the other side, sine B cancels, and I'm left with A over sine A which is the law of sines that I just showed you above. So that just helps you understand <clears throat> what's going on and kind of where this came from. Um, you don't need to do that again, but it helps. If you understood that, it helps understand the law a little bit more. What you're going to have to do is what's on the back. Use the law of sines to find the indicated side lengths and angle measures. Um, with law of sines, what I like to look for is um, angles and the side across from it. So angle A 
is 77. The side across from it is side A, so 15, okay? Angle C is 23. The side across from it is C. In this one, it's ready to go. There's going to be some, which I'll show you in a little bit, that are not ready to go. All right. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and find C by doing law of sines. So it is A over the sine of A. Well, A is 77 equals B or C, I guess, over the sine of C. Now, I actually know A is 15, so I can replace A with 15. And now I only have one variable. Cross multiply, I get C sine 77 equals 15 sine 23. Solve that for C, I divide by sine 77. And the hardest part, honestly, with this is probably typing it in your calculator. So C equals that thing right there. It says round this into the nearest hundredth. So now I'm going to go to my calculator. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not showing it to you, but I would um, listen to what I'm saying here and do what I'm doing. 15 sine 23, hit enter. You're going to get 5.8609 something, something, something. But then without clearing anything, just leave that there. Hit divided by sine 77. And you get 6.015 or 6.02 to the nearest hundredth. Okay. If you didn't get that, put a star by this and ask me in class. Because typing in the calculator for some people is probably the hardest part, like I said, of this lesson. Next, we're finding a missing angle measure. But again, it's already set up because... Angle, side across from it. Angle, side across from it. We have everything that we need. So 11 over the sine of 50 equals 7 over the sine of x. Cross multiply, I get 7 sine 50 equals 11 sine x. Now this one I'm going to divide by 11 to get rid of the, to get sine x by itself. Well, sine x is not x by itself. I get sine x equals 7 sine 50 over 11. This is where it can be a little tricky. All right. What I would do is I would get a decimal. I would do 7 sine 50, hit enter, divide by 11, and you should get 0 0.4874, something like that. But that's the sine of x. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to erase it in a second. So I get the sine of x equals 0 0.4874, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to, I don't want to round that. I just want to leave it like that. Now I'm going to hit inverse sine of that answer. And how to do that? Hit second sign, like we've talked about in the past. And then hit um, second and then the negative button. And right above the negative, you see, you see ANS. That's taking the answer from the previous problem and putting it in the calculator. And you should get X equals 29.17. It says nearest tenth of a degree, so 29.2 degrees. Okay. Um, again, that one with the calculator can be a little tricky. Might want to put a little star by that if you had trouble with it because um, you will be expected to know how to do that. Right. Last one, no triangle here, but I gave you the information that you need to draw a triangle and that's what we're going to do. So in triangle FGH, notice I don't even care if it's to scale. I'm just going to draw a triangle. FH, which is side FH, is 7. HG is 12. And angle F is 72. Now, if I asked you to solve for FG, you might get stuck because you wouldn't have enough information. You don't have FG or you don't have angle H. 
So if you tried setting up law of sines, you'd have 12 over the sine of 72 equals x over sine h. Well, that you can't do anything with that, right? There's two variables. You can't do anything with that. That's what I was talking about. Sometimes it's not quite ready to go. Now, this one, I'm actually, actually asking you to find all the missing parts. The part that you would find first, well, I have 12 and 72. Those go together. 12 over the sine of 72. They go together because they're across from each other. Well, what's a, what else do I know? I have 7 here. What's across from 7? Angle G. So that's what I have to find first. Missing part number 1 is angle G. It has to be. Okay? It's the only way to do this problem. So I get 12 sine G equals 7 sine 72 divided by 12. I get sine G equals all of that. And now I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to do seven sine. Uh, by the way, try this first on your own and see if you get the right answer. Um, that'll be a good indication if you need to ask me or not. Um, and I am going to get 33.69, it says give angle measures to the nearest degree. So nearest whole degree is 33.6, so that's 34 degrees. Well, if this is 34 degrees, I should be able to find angle H pretty easily. That's missing part number two. I have two angles, I can find the third, 180 minus 34 minus 72, and you get 74 degrees. The last missing part is FG. Now we have the, ang the angle measure that we need to figure that out. I'm going to switch colors so you can see the difference here. Um, you, some people might use 7 over sine 34. 34 is a rounded answer, right? We rounded that from 33.6 to 34. I want to avoid using that if possible, and it is possible here. The original one that we had was 12 over sine 72. I'm going to continue using that. That's going to give me a better answer because neither one of those numbers is rounded. X over sine 74. These angle measures are very close, so X should actually be very close to 12. It's going to be a little bit bigger than 12. It's good to know what to expect. Um, when you're solving these. And um, maybe I went too fast there and it's, let me explain what I just said. What I just said there. Um, there's a um, back in first semester we talked about how if angles are congruent, then the sides across from them are congruent, and if the angles are not congruent, then the sides across from the larger angle are larger than um, are larger than other sides. So 74 is larger than 72. So the side across from it's just a, is larger, but not by much. That's how I can kind of predict that this is going to be about 12. All right, so type that in your calculator, see what you get. I get 12.12 to the nearest 10th would be 12.1. Like I said, really close to 12, but a little bit bigger. All right, and that is your law of signs. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and we'll do law of cosines next.